Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished individual from the world of academia, Mr. Roberto Hernandez from Nicaragua. Roberto, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Astush, for the invitation to participate in your programs. And especially, I would like to thank you to all your audience that follow around the world. Thank you. Uh, Roberto is, the, is a consultant and a professor in supply chain, logistics, and procurement at Kaiser University in Nicaragua. So, Roberto, before we start talking about supply chains, can you very briefly tell me about your own background? Yeah, I'm an industrial engineer with a master degree in supply chains and logistics uh, from Chile. You know, I, I, I took this course uh, a few uh, months ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did work for different organizations mm -hmm. like World Bank, WFP, um, US agencies, government mm -hmm. here in Nicaragua and Central America. Mm -hmm. And I work for different regional companies uh, connected with uh, supply chains and logistics during all these years. Mm. And in my experience with the academic, uh, I think, let me see, I began in 2012, mm -hmm. 11 years ago, teaching uh, my first course of logistics in Nicaragua mm. and in Central America too. Mm. Amazing, amazing. But what made you get become interested in supply chain logistics and procurement? When I was um, studying uh, in my career, I was very interesting because uh, we we then defined an opportunity to change the firm that we make uh, the service to give people uh, their stuff, their things, and especially because most of the, the supply chains and logistic operations in Central America and Nicaragua uh, start to burn. Mm. And I saw this one as an opportunity. But when I came from, from my, when I finished my master's degree, mm. uh, there was a, a little thing that, I, what, that was on 28. And I was coming with that, you know, with that energy and decided I'm going to give this experience and share with my country, with my people. And mm. well, at that moment was not the correctly yeah. moment. Uh, after four years then, in 2012, I went to another university, show my program and tell them this is the, the new age mm -hmm. of the logistics. Very interesting. So for my viewers and listeners, uh, what are the key components of an effective supply chain? Understand the service that you want to offer to your customer, your internal and external customer. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know to understand that in now, in this, com in this moment, in this uh, moment, most of company has to give a real experience with logistics. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Peter Drucker, uh, Drucker, the father of the administration in 1970s, he said, logistics will be the next phase to sales because mm -hmm. people want to get an experience. That's what mm -hmm. we have to connect our process and how we give a real experience, especially because People want, at this moment, all their things or their products mm. in a real time. Mm. Very, very interesting. My next question is that what are some of the challenges a lot of supply chain professionals face uh, in the world today? Okay, this is a, a good question, Astusha. I, 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 we were discussing this this question last week with my, with some colleagues on how we can connect with logistic 4.0. That mm -hmm. means the automatizations of process. Mm -hmm. Because most of people that work 
in supply chains and logistics consider that the automatization will bring less opportunity mm -hmm. to work in this area. But mm -hmm. for us, it's more opportunity because we will left to be an operative mm -hmm. and be more strategy. It thinks how we can use the automatization process to increase the productivity, how we can use uh, uh, this experience with uh, with our customer mm. and i'm gonna give you a real example the last mile right. experience you know mm. this these companies offer a new experience with their platform and the customer can has more opportunities to buy in a real time mm. very very interesting and you know in an era of globalization uh, my question is, how can companies or businesses balance the benefits and the risks of uh, very, very complex supply chains? I'm going to resume with a small word or mm. MUCA. Mm. We said uh, we have to understand how we identify the risks and it's not to just identify the risk, it's identify a solution to uh, work with this type of situation, especially because we have a, a world now that is very aggressive, mm -hmm. has a, a lot of things happening now. And in my experience, I usually work with uh, the businessman uh, to construct a, 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 a matrix of risk. Mm -hmm. That means we will identify how these type of things will affect us and what type of resource you will need right. to, 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 to work with them. Mm -hmm. Because there is, you always will have it, but you will identify the, the human resource already, yeah. the economic things we have it, and we have the technical equipment ready, mm -hmm. and who gonna answer or who gonna work, or who will be activated at that moment? I have an I, I usually have an, an example of that mm. the table of crisis in the in the army. You know, mm. the army has a crisis table, and they show all the maps, all the type of situation. Even mm. if that situation are very crazy for the mm. for the imagination. Very very interesting. My next question is on, you know, the pandemic. How has the pandemic influenced the way business supply chain leaders manage uh, their own, uh, you know, resilience and adaptability? Uh, during the pandemic, we were the fair army fighting with the COVID uh, because the first two uh, army was the help people mm. and then the security organization of the different country mm. but in our in our jobs we guarantee that all the, the citizens of different country uh, complete their quarantine at that moment and the right. businessman understand that if we don't continue with uh, our ch supply chains, mm -hmm. we can affect most people uh, and we will not uh, help them to complete mm -hmm. their quarantine their quarantine in uh, in that moment. Right. And one of the lessons that we learn is we need to be prepared for the next mm -hmm. uh, pandemic mm -hmm. situation. Definitely. We need to understand how our supply chains and logistics will be ready mm -hmm. to fight mm -hmm. and to be uh, to complete that effort to give to their citizens right. all the needed with their inventory or their product that they will need at that moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you an example sure. of these situations. The the airlines, remember mm. that the commercial yeah. airlines will, will affect him because the, the industry of tourists going down. Mm. Well, this businessman decided 
to come to, to use their lines to help us around the world with the vaccine mm. because we're running behind time. No, we don't have any time to give uh, to using, for example, the container systems uh, of like Merck or Seaborn Marine and waiting for 30 days. We're running mm. at that month. Mm. And, and this, these are lines changed the mentality and decided to help the world to mm. connect. Very great. Great response. Thank you. My next question is on risk. You know, supply chain leaders um, are now very important. You know, they're part of the C-suite in most large organizations. How can a supply chain leader manage risk, uh, especially risks like natural disasters, pandemics, political instability, supplier failure, because this impacts profits? All right. We are ready, we are ready now mm -hmm. to understand how the disasters around the world mm -hmm. can affect our supply chains, mm -hmm. nature, especially. Now we have two different situations, one's in Europe and the other one in Asia. Mm -hmm. um, these people, these business leaders will run in now to identify other alternatives to, uh, for example, to connect with their vendor or bring their products, for example, uh, for me and other colleagues, Latin America has a good opportunity to offer their products to the rest of the world. Mm. Uh, most of the uh, logistic uh, leader are seeing now Latin America yeah. to construct a hub, especially mm. in South America and now in Central America. Uh, you see uh, Mr. Jeff Bezos mm. has a hub in, in Costa Rica and Panama. And in South America, China has a hub in Peru. And you see, this is an opportunity to identify what type of benefit we will need mm. to get from our vendor, from our service companies, from um, all the, 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 the integrants of yeah. your supply chains. Mm. Very interesting. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, technology. And you know, everyone is now talking of artificial intelligence, blockchain, or a distributed ledger. I would love to get your perspective on how is technology changing supply chain? We are talking about virtual supply chains now, mm -hmm. because uh, you know, a few years ago, we were talking about logistic 4.0. Mm -hmm. That will be happens in the next 10 or 15 years, since 2020, but the pandemic accelerated accelerate all these combinations of artificial uh, intelligence or blockchains. Mm -hmm. But for us, uh, we have a question. Really, the artificial intelligence will affect the jobs mm -hmm. or will change the form or the way that we, may, uh, we make the things. And I'm going to give you an example. We talk about chat GPT. Mm -hmm. And most people think, ah, I will lose my, my job from chat GPT because okay. this program will make my job much better than me. Mm -hmm. But honestly, will be a tool because at the end, you will be taking decisions with the information of them. Correct. And in the next... In the next 10 years, probably in, 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 the, in the world, we will see more robots working mm -hmm. in the supply chains. Yeah. Now we see it in, in, in a port that mm -hmm. is full automatization, that is in Rotterdam, Holland. Uh, this is a, a, a full automatization sport. Mm -hmm. They work seven, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. no? Very for me, it's an opportunity. Absolutely. It's a, a good opportunity. Absolutely. I agree completely. My next question is that, you know, the, the young people, and you're young, 
are also now talking about ethical practices of supply chains. You know, they want to make sure that goods that are being procured are being procured in a sustainable manner, in an ethical manner. I'd love to get your thoughts. Well, ethical, you, you know, there is a, a good question because we usually said, um, how ethical can be a person who understands that how their work workers mm -hmm. works and how can I help them to training to understand their business mm -hmm. and especially to understand the needs of our customer correct because one of the things that we are talking about in this area now is the corruptions. Uh, this this affecting um, the firm uh, that uh, most of company make business is ah looks I'm gonna give you this money I give me the contract uh, but honestly is that sustainable in a in a middle term uh, mm. to me it's the firm that we gonna make business the benefits that we can identify in our common career mm. if. You offer a service that I will give to other company. You will be my partner, you know, right. will be my vendor. It's to be a strategic partner in mm. my business. That is the firm. And the other things is how you can combat with the corruptions, especially mm. if you are the CEO and show your workers the correct rules to make business. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be competitive for we for uh, we sorry we be competitive with our knowledge. We're gonna show the experience to our customer, mm -hmm. and that's all for me. Mm -hmm. Show them um, the the firm that offered your service mm -hmm. and show the experience to our cost to mm -hmm. your customer. I have a, I don't know I don't. Oh, if you remember uh, a movie from uh, who uh, this actor Cuba and uh, this other actor, famous actor mm -hmm. from this, he always has an expression. Uh, Tom Cruise, sorry, that was the other actor in a in a movie that Tom Cruise listen a, a question from his uh, football player mm. show me the money mm. but in the form that you show the money is in the form how you make business respecting the nature respecting the, the people respecting mm. the, your business partner mm. no? very nice that's for me Fascinating. No, great response. Thank you. My next question is that, you know, you were, you were telling me that uh, Amazon has started uh, a center or a hub in Costa Rica. China has done it in Peru. What are some of the unique challenges and opportunities for supply chain professionals in Latin America and Nicaragua? Well, for me, it's uh, we have a, a, a lot of opportunity here, especially with um, our, with the firm that we're gonna make to grow up our supply chains. Especially if we if develop a a complete integration Correct. from business, because most of the uh, of the business here in Latin America are connecting with PMEs. That's the, the biggest number of companies here mm. in Latin America. And I consider that if we have uh, a common ideas to give them uh, how to make a very competitive supply chain, mm. will be more opportunities to work here. Right. And especially if you have any specializations like uh, warehouse designs or management inventory mm -hmm. or with last mile and platform, because we were talking now about the DevOps and the, these new guys will be connected mm -hmm. with technology 
and supply chains. Mm. That means the developed operation evangelists mm. will come to our country and help with connect technologies and these companies begin the process in the automatization to increase their productivity, mm -hmm. their productivity. Because one of the problems here is how much money I will use to bring automatization for my companies. Correct. I prefer invest that money mm -hmm. in buy products or, 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 or new trucks or, or, or new things for my business, but they don't consider the automatization will help them yeah. and especially if you see in the market now uh, we the, the in the e-commerce the numbers show us that the people prefer use their phone their smartphones to mm. buy products correct correct how, well said how we connect yeah well said i have time for one more question now and this question is for a lot of young people around the world who will listen to our conversation. What would you say, Roberto, are three lessons you would want our young students or professionals interested in supply chain to take away from your vast understanding of supply chain and our conversation? The first one, you have to understand that at this moment, we have to be more focused on the level of service to our customers. Mm. Once that you have understand the level of service mm. that your companies or your supply chains wants to give to them, you will focus in create and create a new process, a new firm to to give them a new experience. Mm. Second one, be more holistic because we. We have to understand that working in supply chains or logistics is not be a fireman, it's be more strategic. Mm -hmm. And you have to come out from the box. You have to identify how this box moves mm -hmm. or you, how you see them. Yeah. And the last one, uh, you have to understand that in the, in the, in the future, we be more connected with uh, technology. Mm. We have to less uh, defer uh, to them mm. because we have to use it to connect our supply chains and the experience to our customer. And at that moment, mm. you will be taking decisions focused in the service that you want to give to your customer. And one other thing is and the last one, as yeah. uh, I would, I would like to say that people who work in supply chains in all different areas, women and men, understand that they has to work three sixty five mm. days, twenty four hours mm. during a year. That means you have to be more in, uh, focused on your customer experience. Mm, very interesting. Very, very interesting. And on that note, Roberto, and your wonderful lessons, focus on level of services. Second, you said, be more strategic, think out of the box. Third, you said, learn technology to be able to connect supply chain with the customer. And the fourth one, you said, remember that supply chain role is 24 by 7, 365 days per year, because your customer comes first. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your journey. Thank you for talking to me about supply chains, logistics, and procurement. There's so many different things you spoke about today to me where I learned new things about supply chain from you as well. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you, Astus, and thank you to your audience for this experience because this is a, 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 a and I will say, this is a, the correct way to share knowledge and experience around the, around the world. Thank and that will help more people, more entrepreneur people that are thinking what I'm doing now. Mm. But how to I will do it and, and, and listen your podcasts give an ideas to them. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast. 
a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called Youth.